Pokemon Bank just recently turned 10 years old. Do you feel old yet? So Pokemon Bank was released in early 2014, either near the end of January or early February, depending on your region. And Pokemon Bank marked an all new direction for the series in the way that it combined some aspects of a couple of different things that they were doing at the time. You had the ability to store your Pokemon online through Cloud Storage, which was new thing, although storing Pokemon in some sort of out of the main series method was no new thing. You had the Pokemon Lab in Pokemon Stadium, you had the Pokemon Box Ruby and Sapphire, you had my Pokemon Ranch. This time it was cloud based, didn't require a full separate game so to speak, it was just a software you could download on your 3DS, but also it was the new way to transfer Pokemon from previous generations using Pokemon Transporter, Poke Transporter, that came alongside it. Now, being a method of transferring Pokemon around that was cloud based, this came with its own new set of pros and cons. On the one hand, this was now a paid service on online servers run by Nintendo, so you did have to pay f an annual fee. It was $5 a year USD, which isn't a whole lot. It's actually kind of chump change. And this got you 100 boxes that could hold 30 Pokemon each for a total of 3,000 Pokemon that you could hold at one time. Technically, this could be a uh, 30,030 because you also had a transfer box, which was exclusively used by Poke Transporter in order to bring your Pokemon up from previous games into Pokemon Bank. They would go through this transport box and then sit there while you access Pokemon Bank with an actual 3DS game to move them into Pokemon Bank properly. But also, being a cloud storage based software, this also allowed you to just store Pokemon that you wanted to move off of your 3DS games up into this cloud service so that you could have more room in your game if you wanted. Or if you just wanted a, an easy, convenient way to have like a living Dex for your Generation 6 and 7 games, then you could sort everything out through Pokemon Bank through that. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Pokemon Bank didn't come out until early 2014, which means that if you were playing Pokemon X and Y right at launch, which was in October 2013, mind you, that meant that there was, for a few months, no way to actually bring your Pokemon from the Generation 5 games into Pokemon X and Y, which was, well, it was... It was kind of quite a wait. I mean, looking back in hindsight, it was definitely worth it because we had a really convenient way of moving Pokemon around once it was introduced. So three to four months of waiting in hindsight wasn't really that bad. I mean, it took like five, six months just to get compatibility between Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl and Legends Arceus for Pokemon Homes, so. And on top of having all of this space to transfer and store your Pokemon, Pokemon Bank also introduced a couple of things that would also carry over into Pokemon Home, such as the ability to accumulate points that you could use on different things. You could convert them into Poke Miles or Battle Points to use in your Gen 6 and 7 games. So that was a pretty cool reward for moving your Pokemon around through Pokemon Bank. And later on, when Pokemon Sun and Moon came out, they would also introduce a full Pokedex, so you could actually look at your Pokemon's Pokedex entries and what games they're available in on Pokemon Bank as well. So that was a pretty cool update that they added. The information you could see in Pokemon Bank wasn't really a whole lot in depth. You had the menu sprites for the Pokemon. You'd be able to see their moveset, their stats, a couple other very small aspects to them. You did get to see the full 3D model in the Pokedex, although it was just a static image of their idle pose. You didn't get to actually see the model in motion, but it was pretty cool to just be able to have some sort of information to differentiate one Pokemon from another while looking through. Now, Pokemon Bank was really anything more than just a simple storage app so you could have your Pokemon moved around a lot easier, but it did come with some perks in addition to the stuff I already mentioned. They also did little giveaways for Pokemon that you could get for certain periods of time. Like for example, to welcome people to Pokemon Bank for the first time near the launch, they would give out a special Celebi, which was in a luxury ball and was the only way to get this Celebi. The only way to get a Celebi in a luxury ball that I was made aware of by Sir 
Sir Toasty Toes. Sir Toasty Toes has really great videos on their own channel, so you should check them out. And speaking of the kind of content that they focus on, these special giveaway Pokemon also came with the exclusive Classic Ribbon, which is a ribbon that was given away with Pokemon during events for many different generations of Pokemon games. So it was pretty cool that Pokemon Bank was doing this incentive where you could just get some little gifts here and there just for kind of using the service. It wasn't a whole lot, but it was it was a nice little bit of recognition. And these little gifts were unique in a couple other ways. Not only did they have the classic ribbon, but you also had the hidden abilities for the Johto starters, the Reggie Trio, as well as the Alolan starters, and even Oranguru and Passimian. And there was even a giveaway for the unique Munium Z to give Mew its own signature Z move in the Generation 7 games as well. Now, Pokemon Bank wasn't really perfect. It did have a few, like, weird things about it. Like, even though they were both connecting through the same kind of hub interface, for whatever reason, if you had Pokemon from a Generation 6 game, like XY, Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, and then sent them into the Generation 7 games, Sun, Moon, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, they wouldn't be able to go back, even though, like, you could have everything else possibly legal with them, where, you know, moveset might be legal, the Pokemon species could have existed already. For whatever reason, once you sent them into a Generation 7 game, put them back in bank, they can't go back. It's fine, I guess. But it was convenient in that if you brought Pokemon up from the Generation 5 games using Poke Transporter, they could go either into a Generation 6 game or straight into a Generation 7 game. You didn't have to go into a Generation 6 game first and then move them into 7, so they could theoretically skip a generation, which was kind of cool. Certainly makes Pokemon transferring from earlier generations through Bank a lot more convenient. You can even transfer them from Bank directly into Home without even touching a Generation 6 or 7 game which was a nice plus to just kind of speed the process up a bit. And speaking of those previous generations of games, we can't really talk about Pokemon Bank without talking about Poke Transporter. Poke Transporter was the app that was released right alongside Pokemon Bank at the exact same time, and originally it only supported the Generation 5 games Black, White, Black 2, White 2, but later on, it would receive updates to support the virtual console releases of Red, Blue, and Yellow, as well as Gold, Silver, and Crystal, and Pokemon Green, of course, and the Japanese Red, Blue, and Yellow, if you are playing the Japanese versions. So that was pretty cool. You had the Generation 1 and 2 games supported through Poke Transporter. It wasn't a one-to-one -one level of support. The Pokemon stat structure being different meant that their stats would be overwritten, since IVs and EVs are not really quite the same as the stats from the Generation 1 and 2 games, which are DVs and stat experience. They don't quite operate the exact same way, they're fundamentally the same, but since they function different, and those older Pokémon don't have abilities or natures, in order to work around that, they would keep the Pokémon species the same, and all of its moves and as much of the data that could be transferred over, and then the stats would just be completely overwritten, and you'd get three stats that are actually perfect 31 IVs, and they would come with their hidden ability, so that was really cool. Now, of course, this didn't apply to the Pokémon being brought in from Pokémon Black, White, Black 2, and White 2, because obviously all of that data was already there, so whatever was transferred through those games would have all of their stuff intact. But for the Generation 1 and 2 games, you had this neat little compromise where since you couldn't get the exact Pokémon, they got as close to the exact Pokémon as possible, gave you some free perfect stats, gave you special ability that most of the time is a little harder to come by for that Pokémon, and they even came with a little Game Boy icon which was, I thought, kind of cute, and also would give the little message that they were obtained from the Kanto or Johto of the good old days. Now as I mentioned in my previous video on cross-gen transfer in general, the these Pokemon that you would transfer through Poke Transporter would exclusively be whatever's in Box 1, which was kind of weird because the Western releases of the Generation 1 and 2 games can only hold 20 Pokemon in a box, whereas the Japanese releases, they've always been able to have 30 Pokemon in a box. So, international versions, you'd kind of have to send more separate boxes of Pokemon at a time, but I mean, it worked fine overall. You were still sending a ton of Pokemon all up at once, and what was really convenient is that in previous generations, Generation 5, Generation 4, 
you couldn't transfer Pokemon that knew HM moves, so they'd be stuck in that game. So it was a little tricky to kind of move stuff up. You'd have to make sure that you went and deleted anything that wouldn't allow them to be transferred up. In this instance, though, they could know the move. It was fine. You could still send them up items they couldn't be held on to. So unfortunately, you couldn't have like a Pokemon hold something from one game to transfer it through bank. The item either, depending on which game they're coming from, either they just couldn't be transferred at all or the item would be put back in the bag of that game. And Poke Transporter had this weird legality checker as well, which basically made it so that certain Pokemon that could not be legitimately obtained would not pass through into Pokemon Bank, so you wouldn't be able to bring up the Arceus from the Hall of Origin if you, say, use an action replay to get the Azure Flute and go get the Arceus in Pokemon Diamond Pearl Platinum that way. They could get brought up into the Generation 5 games just fine, but they wouldn't be able to pass through Poke Transporter into Pokemon Bank. The Mew from the Generation 1 games uh, has to be of a very specific original trainer. They have to have a special event Mew that was given away at that time. Otherwise, if the Mew is anything else, then and they wouldn't be able to pass through, unfortunately. And Celebi that are under level 30 also cannot pass through the transporter. Originally, before Pokemon Crystal had come out, no Celebis could go through, but now they allow it so that if the Celebi is at least level 30. Now, I haven't tried it, but I would assume that this means that if you did arbitrary code execution for the Celebi egg trick like I did originally when the virtual console versions of Gold and Silver had come out but not Crystal. Uh, I did that trick and I got my own Celebi. It probably would pass through just fine. I haven't tried it yet but it would be cool to try that out. And funnily enough if you used glitches to get Pokemon that were over level 100 in the virtual console games they would pass through Pokemon Transporter and Pokebank just fine. They would just be set to level 100. So if you did the missing no trick and got yourself Pokemon that were you know, level 140 something, 150 something is very common through those glitches. You'll be able to send them up just fine. Just know that they will be just set to level 100. Now, there's a lot of other aspects of what Poke Transporter allows to pass through it. So much so that I would just suggest checking the link in the description on Poke Transporter to read more about what it looks at in order to send things into Pokemon Bank because there is really a lot of weird, interesting stuff that Poke Transporter looks at in order to decide whether or not you can send something through, as well as how it goes about doing that. Now, I don't know about you, but personally, I spent quite a bit of time sending things into Pokemon Bank, moving them around into different games. I've moved stuff over between Pokemon X and Y and Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire quite a bit because as someone who didn't always want to trade directly or for a while didn't have the means to trade directly with myself, I have for a while only had one 3DS unit, then, you know, that was a convenient way to be able to swap Pokemon between games. Games. And even though it only works for the Generation 7 games, it was a lot of fun to be able to catch Pokemon in the original Red, Blue, Yellow, Gold, Silver, Crystal, and actually be able to play them in modern games. Even if it was the virtual console releases, I thought it was still really cool that for once, you could actually have all of the Pokemon games connected in some manner. And I mentioned that in my previous video. I just thought that the what they had done with Pokemon Bank at the time and supporting the virtual console releases was really cool. And that brings me to my last point about this video, and why I wanted to make it, and that is that Pokemon Bank isn't going to be around forever. As a cloud storage based platform, as something that requires being run on Nintendo's servers, it is going to go down one day. Thankfully, they've given a bit more leeway with Pokemon Bank and Poke Transporter, where they're not going to be going down, where everything else will be in April of 2024, but we don't know for sure how much longer these software have left. Thankfully, these are free if you've already got a 3DS that has Pokemon Bank on it, but it is a shame to think that we had a period where Generations 1 through 7 and beyond, Generations 1 through 9 could all communicate in some way thanks to Pokemon Bank and Pokemon Home and all of those other transfer methods integrating together. And when Pokemon Bank goes down, we're going to have a very weird time for the series. I don't have a whole lot of faith that Game Freak and Pokemon Company are going to create a solution to this problem, I think that it's very likely there won't be a solution. And so it's a little bittersweet, but looking back, it was really nice that for 
The release of Pokemon Bank, they started making an effort to reconnect old games that had been locked out from the rest of the franchise and brought everything together for a period of time that started with just those two apps, Virtual Console, you had by the time Pokemon Crystal was released in January 2018, everything was connected again, and from then until this video's creation, you can get Pokemon from the very beginning and bring them all the way up to now. It's really interesting to look back and we're going to have a point where generations 1 and 2 are going to be stuck by themselves once again. Generations 3, 4, and 5, because of the way that they transfer, will be connected still. Generation 6 and Generation 7 are going to be separate. Since Pokemon Bank was the only way to transfer between those two generations, Generation 6 and Generation 7 are going to be in the weirdest spot because they're going to be isolated by themselves. And then of course, the Generation 7 games, Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu, as well as Generation 8 and onward, will all have Pokemon Home, so they'll be disconnected from everything else previously. Again, unless Pokemon comes up with some sort of solution. Again, we don't know how long that period is going to last, but Pokemon's official accounts have been urging people to move their stuff up as soon as possible, so we're on borrowed time. As soon as the internet on the 3DS and Wii U goes down in general, outside of Pokemon Bank and Poke Transporter, it's only going to be a matter of time. So this is kind of a little public service announcement if you didn't know already. If you've got stuff on your Pokemon Bank, you might want to consider moving it up. So much that can be done. A living dex, an origin dex. I have an origin living dex actually, and that's going to be shown off in its own video as well. That's going to be kind of the final part of this three-part series on Pokemon across different generations that I've been doing. But I don't want to leave this video on a low note, so I want to put a little bit more of a positive spin. If there's anything that I've learned from being part of the Pokemon community for as long as I have, I have to say Pokemon fans are crazy. There will be likely some way discovered, much like they've done for the Battle Tower and other internet features of the DS Pokemon games, including restoring event Pokemon giveaways from those games, I think that they'll find a way to have servers for Pokemon Bank and Poke Transporter. Now, I don't know if this is going to be a situation where they won't be able to connect to Pokemon Home, so you might still be locked out from the Generation 8 and 9 games, but there might still be a way to keep the first seven generations of Pokemon games connected in some way. I have a little bit of faith. There's a homebrew scene that's already done this sort of thing through homebrew apps, but I'm sure that there's going to be some form or another where they allow for Pokemon Bank and Poke Transporter to continue. That might be a little overly optimistic, but again, there's one thing I learned about the Pokemon community. They're crazy. Resourceful, intelligent, dedicated, and passionate. I think that there will be a way yet to see that Pokemon Bank and Poke Transporter continue. But until that day, we do still have the official servers, and we do still have an interconnected entire franchise. It really is interesting that Pokemon Bank came out 10 years ago and I'm even more interested to see where the next 10 years go from here. This is the Azure Flute Channel. As I always say, have a good rest of your day, have a good rest of your week, thank you for watching, and see you next video. You've made it to the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching, listening in. If you've made it this far, I did just want to give a quick update. This was the second in a series of three videos, the first one being on cross-gen transfer as a whole, this video, I really wanted to just focus on talking about Pokemon Bank and Poke Transporter. There's so much that can be said about them. I didn't even cover everything. I'm sure that there's stories that you can tell me in the comments about little bits and pieces that I missed or just your own experiences with using the service. I do have one more video planned and that is just going to be a showcase of my living origin decks on Pokemon Home. I'll go over how I went about doing it, why I did it, and just all of the little intricacies and methodology. There's going to be a lot of little fun stories and fun things to show off with that, so I hope you guys look forward to it. If you haven't already done so, please be sure to leave a like on the video as well as comment and subscribe to the channel so you can check out any future videos that come out from over here. Anyway, again, thank you all for tuning in. Bye for now.